What's going on, people? I was a member of a really good conversation this morning. There was a comment on the thread that I thought was very appropriate. Marketplaces are like drugs. Marketplaces being eBay, Amazon. And I was like, that's a really good comment because if you ever talk to someone who is uh, making money on eBay and Amazon and they really haven't had many issues or setbacks, it's like you're talking to a crackhead. I remember, and that's one of this group, I'm a member of a Facebook, about three years ago, I shared my experiences, and there was a great deal of doubt, trepidation. Oh, Glendon did something. Oh, Glendon's lying. Well, here it is, three going on four years later, many of the people who doubted my testimony experienced similar things that I went through. Well, shucky darn. And I've noticed that the tone of that group, more and more people are like, I'm uh, diversifying off eBay, I'm reducing my you know, eBay dependency. You know, I actually see these terms because if you, if 51 or 52% of your revenues come from eBay, you're eBay top heavy. And I want you to think, this isn't me saying, I hope your business goes to shit. This is me saying, what are you going to do if eBay gets rid of you? What are you going to do if Amazon gets rid of you? And sure, you can get back on another company and everything, but you're always like looking over your shoulders. Like, oh God, are they going to find me out? Are they going to find me out? So you got that issue. But it, it really, really struck a chord with me because it's like, wow, that's a great analogy. The drug habit of eBay and Amazon. Because that's it. I have people coming after me, coming after me. Oh, Glendon, oh, you're lying. eBay doesn't get rid of you unless you do something. Amazon doesn't get rid of you unless you do something. Well, every year, just about, there's a new TOS that comes out. So something that you were doing, and I give you a great example that happened to us, is fine, and then they change the terms of service, and then you forget a listing or two that has that in there, and next thing you know, you're in trouble. So you don't really have to do anything other than just not be on top of your data which to me, I think is a piss poor reason to boot someone off of a platform. And yes, you do get additional chances, one, two, three, and you're out. But these lifelong bans occur because both these sites, eBay and Amazon know there's nowhere else you can go that already has the kind of traffic that they built. Unless you build your own website and drive your own traffic. And let, let's really talk about it. Because when you when you hear a drug addict talk about their high, their you know trying to get off the drug, how hard it is, the withdrawals, the DDTs, the munchies, whatever they have, it's so many excuses. Let's look at it. Okay, eBay has a lot of traffic. Amazon has a lot of traffic, right? Do you get all that traffic? No. You only get a certain amount of that traffic. And if you put up an item or items that no one really is interested in, regardless of the traffic, the shit's not going to sell. So with that, I want you to think about this. If you had a website and you had a $30 product, right? With, say the product costs you five bucks to make. So that's $25 profit plus, you know, say you're at $22.50. But, you know, the original selling price is $30. And you only get 500 sales in a year. $30, 500 sales. Doesn't sound like a lot, right? Well, let me make sure my math is correct. Ah, okay, okay, okay. 
I had to think about that before I got, yeah, so, yeah, not a year per month, I had to think about that, so you got a $30 product, you get 500 sales per month, that's 15 grand, that's $185,000 per year, now, with very, very nice profit margins, even with the cost of your product, even with distribution, even website paying people in taxes, you still should net out at six figures or close to it. That's a very good living. 5% of the people in this country do not make six figures. That's a very good living. And that's just 500 sales per month. Now, you know, that's just very clean. That's not counting anything. That's not, and that's saying you've been in business for a while and you've built up to that level. And you continue to add 10, 20% per month or per year, whatever you want to do, to make up for the people who are not coming back or, you know, just really depending on what you sell. So, using that, we're not looking, and there's a lot of people who are on marketplaces who don't get 500 sales per month because they're hoping for sales. They're looking to uh, get things to come their way because marketplaces are becoming very volatile. Very, very volatile. So there's, there's a lot of things that you really, really have to look at here. But let's get back to the drug addiction. And like I said, I mean, it, it, that's the reason I'm doing this video because it resonated with me so well because you cannot talk to an addict about their addiction until they are ready to get off. Because you mean, I mean, they're just sitting there like, hey, you know, eBay's dangerous, Amazon's dangerous, and they're like tapping on there, get that vein ready, get toked up because they got to have it. Because uh, one of the reasons that these marketplaces are so powerful is you get that social proof and that immediate gratification, even without a sale. And you're like, what? Even without a sale. When you put up your ad on eBay, or well, you're posting on eBay, you're posting on Amazon, you can hit the share button and tweet it out. It's like, wee, look at me, I've got something on eBay. Wee, wee. There's a lot of wee, but not a lot of whoa. Whoa is when the money comes in. There's a ton of wee, but not a lot of woe. And when you're dealing with these drug addictions, it, it's it's a 12-step pro process. First step, you must recognize there is a problem. Without that, all goes for naught. It is just um, a total, total waste of time and waste of conversation. Going back to the group, um, part of the reason the addiction is so strong so that drug i mean amazon is a hell of a drug ebay is a hell of a drug the reason that these drugs are so powerful is that high it is so hard to replicate now this is the thing ebay amazon to me those are synthetic drugs because you know there's nothing more pure than the shit you make that, sh that custom shit, that bubonic shit. I'm speaking from my uh, storage auction lifestyle. <clears throat> Came across so much stuff. But when you are getting that organic, specially laced stuff, your website, your uh, digital assets, your digital presence, in the beginning, because you've got to go out there and plow up the soil and plant the seeds it, you know you don't really see anything because when you have crops that are growing for the beginning there's a lot of stuff that's going on underground you can't see it you just know that you put those seeds there and you are waiting for those seeds to say hey we're, 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 gonna, we're gonna give you some crops. We're gonna give you some fruit. We're gonna give you some vegetables. There will be a harvest, but without the immediate gratification whee, of eBay and Amazon, it's hard for you to understand the process because you can't see anything happening. 
And I think this is one of the best things about the way that I grew up because that was like a normal little test. Like go out and get some plants, put it in a jar, and you see the, the seeds pop and the roots and stuff. So the, the, the top part wasn't happening. But if you know anything about agriculture, the root system is is the most important part because if the root system doesn't grow right and it does in the the plant doesn't get the proper nutrients, it's not going to grow correctly or it's going to grow all kind of jacked up. So you don't see that. And because the thing is that's your best high, that organic high that you get from creating your own shit, building your own shit. I was having a conversation with a friend who had went to a conference and he was just blown away by all of these people who had websites that were making 500,000, a million, two, three million a year that he had never heard of. Another thing with the eBay, Amazon drug habit is when, you know, it's always just like, yeah, I sell on eBay. You get an instant credibility, associate, you know, uh, prestige by association. You get that. You don't get that with um, your own website until it blows up or it may never blow up. I have a friend that has a website, real simple shit, real simple shit. And that website makes her about 15 G's a month. She's had it about 10 years and she don't really do much to it. She don't really do much to it. So that website plus the other stuff she has she is like balling out. I mean, people wonder, it's like, how do you make money? And she keeps her mouth closed. Only reason I know is I knew her way back when, and she was one of the first people that I knew that got real heavy in the web, real, real heavy. And she's built this stuff, and this is something else. In the beginning, your money may not be what you want it to be when you have your own website. However, if you go ahead and you get something that you can sell to a lot of people around the world over and over again or you know it, it just has widespread appeal it doesn't even have to be that expensive and you put together a system or a process I mean you know you're 10 that website you could be retired because the whole thing with digital stuff is build something grow to these crazy crazy proportions then sell it or get acquired what about building a website, keeping that shit and making money forever and forever. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to give you some numbers here. I'm just going to give you a scenario. Get your house paid off fairly quickly. Get your cars paid off fairly quickly. And then you have $9,000 per month coming in. You have no mortgage. You have no car payments. You got nine G's coming in a month. You are living a great lifestyle you're not rich in the historical context of being rich but you are wealthy because you have time and you don't have any debt and you have you you can make choices like say you and your mate want to go to australia for a month okay website's clicking um yeah we, we can do that it's not a question of if it's a question of when Whereas when you are living a traditional lifestyle, it's a question of if and when. So there, there are many, many things you can do, but just to give you that scenario, that if you create a website that gets to that point in eight, nine, 10 years, whatever, and you don't have a mortgage, you don't have car payments, you are free from the matrix, or you have created your own sub matrix inside the matrix, and you're not living life the way that everyone else is. Just a thought, when you are looking at this because one of the things I hate to see on the internet I want to make as much money as possible that is a bullshit goal that goal has no teeth and it just sounds good it just sounds good it's like yeah you know we want to make as much money as possible and then when someone of intelligence says hey how much money is that you're like hmm whatever man whatever you know I'm trying to get no you are you know what you are? You're unfocused as fuck. That's what you are. And if you're unfocused, your aim will always be off. I know I heard this thing like uh, a broken clock is correct twice a day, stuff like that. But I'd rather be correct 12, you know, 24 times a day as possible. But that whole deal is 
that social proof, that prestige by association is one of the reasons that people will stay with eBay, will stay with Amazon, will stay with these companies and not make enough money to live on. Because social proof is more important than actual success. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back who did not hear me. Social proof is more acceptable, more wanted than actual success. And if you think that uh, I'm just like saying stuff, let's look at the evidence. There's a bunch of people on eBay. There's a bunch of people on Amazon who are breaking even, barely making any money. Yet, and they've been doing this for years. What's the old saying? <laughs> if you continue to do the same thing in the same manner and expect different results, you're fucking crazy. Cocoa, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So, essentially, that whole social proof thing is just out of control. When you create your own thing, because... You know, I, I'm starting to get a little recognition. This is the fifth year for my thing. But, you know, the Hustler's Mindset Project. What the fuck is that? You know, there's a big company. Someone said those same words years and years ago. It's like, Walmart? What the fuck is that? Everyone knows what the fuck Walmart is now. Walmart is that 50,000 pound beast that does what it wants, where it wants, how it wants. If it wants to come into your grandmother's house and shit on her table, it can and will and get away with it. That's Walmart. They can do that. But they didn't start off like that. They didn't start off like that. They, it was Sam Walton, and actually, if you read his story, his first store, he got screwed. Couldn't renew his lease, had to go to business. He learned ownership properties at that point. He learned, it's like, I need to own some shit. I need to own this stuff. I need to um, be in control. He learned that lesson. He learned it well. But in the beginning, it's like, who the fuck are you? So what if you have a website? That's, that's the sentiment. That's what's coming your way. But as you go on... As you build your business and time goes by, or, you know, say the first one doesn't work out. You spend two or three years, it's like, okay, that website didn't work out. Then you build another one. Then you build another one. You get to the point where your failures become leverage points of success because you're like, oh, I've been down this road before. Then you go ahead and hit reverse and pop back out of there and go in another direction because your knowledge base is increasing. But as long as you're on these marketplaces, you're not going to learn the things you will learn by having your own website. Also in the thread, someone else had put in there, and I thought it was a good comment, I think it was Brandon, that people are doing it wrong. For every hour you spend on the marketplace, you need to spend two hours on your shit. I would say three or four. You know, really, really start honing on your stuff. And I'm coming to you as someone that this is how, this is what I learned. I'm going to just share a few things with you. I have one website. It's called Hustler's Food. I really don't do shit with it. It's just a place for people to go get the free ebook. That's it. And I've got some landing pages through my uh, email client. And I go straight for the money. I use Gumroad, I use Square. I don't have a website, but I'm making way more money <clears throat> than a lot of people who are using these marketplaces. And I don't have a website that to make money with. I want you to think about this. I tested this. I am able to make money online and I'm not using my own website to a great degree. Now, how did I learn this? Because I had my own website. That's how I learned this stuff. I, I had my own website. And I was like, okay, this is working. I went to forums. You have to get started. But I'm just telling you, I don't have a website making me money, but I'm making money online in several different ways. Uh, YouTube. Uh, Amazon's going to start kicking again because I finally figured out a way to make Amazon win for me and I can get what I want out of Amazon. I need to come through this neighborhood 
and just record this. This is this is just freaking gorgeous. But I actually took I didn't really take my ebooks off Amazon, but I pulled back from Amazon and I spent the last 24 months learning how to sell books and audiobooks and stuff off of Amazon for a very important reason. Now, I don't hate Amazon. I'm not going to give you any Amazon hate or like, oh, you know, I'm not even going to get in all that. What I am going to say, what the hell is that? Okay, some kid lost their stuff. What, I'm, what I am going to say is when you put on your Indiana Jones hat and you start exploring things, you start looking at the possibilities it opens up new synapses in your mind. I just, and it came to me not too long ago how I could use Amazon and win because I didn't like the structure. Because when you sell a book on Amazon, Kindle, they have punitive measures put in if you get beyond certain price points. If your book's above $9.99, you only get a 35% royalty, which means they get 65%. That's there for a reason. It's not like they're saying, hey, they, they'll tell you. You can price it for whatever you want to price it for. But if you do this, you're not going to get as much money as we will. <laughs> I mean, it's slick. And like I said, I'm not mad at them. But I figured out a way to win, get the 70% royalty, and get the client's email address. That wouldn't have happened if I kept just dicking around with Amazon and not like say, hey, what can I do to get the person? And I mean, it, it's so freaking simple, but it took me a lot of time and effort and just being out here to figure that shit out. Because once again, what I teach in my courses, 30 days, you got to get the client's email address. You got to get them on the email list. You have to control access to information to your customers or potential customers. You have to be in that driver's seat to be totally successful online. I know there's people making you know ten to fifteen thousand uh, dollars on Kindle, but what many authors don't realize that if they had that client's email address, they could triple their money. Different conversation. Now I got your attention, don't I? With that, you could triple your money because you can do way more when you have access to that information than what you can. And due to the fact that it's Amazon's business, eBay's business, there's a way to get around that with eBay. <clears throat> Actually, I taught one of my consulting clients how to do it. And uh, it's real interesting how it's going for them. But essentially, when you're out here in the world, because there's all of these accessories, courses, ebooks for marketplaces. But. I want you to ask yourself, and I want you to go to Forbes, and I want you to go to networth.com, and I want you to put in eBay, Amazon, millionaires. Now, there are people who make millions of dollars on eBay, but it's not that many. And uh, there's some with Amazon. But go ahead and look. You will not find anyone like worth $1 billion selling shit on Amazon other than the people who own Amazon. You're not going to find it for a reason. <laughs> you're not going to find it for a reason but just you know some food for thought just some food for your hustle the sooner that you start working on your shit and not their shit the sooner that your shit will blow up because I've seen it I've seen it too many times I've seen people leave eBay and Amazon and blow the fuck up there are built in ceilings with eBay and Amazon. It's very hard to scale it. And then you're like, well, I'll just go out and buy more shit and I'll list more shit. Okay, you do that. And you're going to reach a point of diminishing returns. There's one uh, idiot who loves to derate me who does eBay and Amazon and he's reached a point of diminishing returns and he can't fucking figure out that he needs to start his own shit. <laughs> Got a degree in everything but has not been able to figure that shit out. Because you can only list so much. You can only ship so much. And then when you get to the point where you have a warehouse and employees and you're dependent upon Amazon and eBay, what if you get kicked off? Not only are you out of business, but 
people who were dependent on you to pay their bills no longer have a paycheck. I mean, that that's some real shit. That's some very real shit. And I've known many people that that has happened to. So just really, really be careful about that. All right. And if you love this message, be sure to subscribe. It's going to be here or here, the blocks. Get your free audio book. Join Hustlers University. And there's some other goodies there if you so desire. All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.